Well, today on Nation, this may be the most controversial episode that we've had, but hopefully you get something out of it. Hopefully you know exactly what I'm talking about and you don't send me angry emails. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR Nation, and you are here. What's going on? Thanks for checking us out. If it is your first time, go back, listen, follow all the episodes. We have well over 130 minute episodes, and they come out every Friday. So make sure to stay on that. If you're a podcast listener, find them anywhere podcasts are available, and please subscribe to them because that is awesome for us. If you're watching this on YouTube, what's going on? It is the place to have the conversation. So please do give us that thumbs up on the video. It helps us tremendously and leave a comment. One word, 10 words, a whole paragraph. I love to hear from you guys. Please do that. And if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids, and you buy your supplies through me as a rep from Window Cleaning Resource, it is because of you that I get name brand fireworks. Uh, that is actually uh, one of the requests. I love it. By the way, guys that uh, order with me, they put everything in their cart a lot of the times and they'll text me and be like, yo, uh, everything's in my cart. Go ahead and put it in. And they tell me what kind of name brand things they can buy. Keep doing that. That is stinking, stinking awesome. But if you want to buy your supplies through me, the greatest thing you could possibly do in my world is buying supplies directly from me, big or little, it doesn't matter and it doesn't cost you any extra, but I want to be your rep. I want to be everybody's rep, right? My number direct is 862-312-2026, 862-312-2026. Yes, that's a cell. You can text it, call it, whatever. I just can't get pictures on it. It's a VoIP cell. So, Whew, there you go. Well, a couple of shout outs, actually. I have quite a few of them, and I had to turn them down a little bit. So hopefully next week, you guys are so awesome, and you guys have been just buying so much stuff for me that I can't even keep up. Uh, but what's up to Michael Martinez, Jacob Dell, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Cameron Clark, Clark, what's going on? Derek Holloway, what's up, man? And uh, David Davies, who I promised I would give a shout out to. What is going on? Um, hello to all of you. But this week we're talking about the top five customer types and not like Oh, the number one is the best customer type because these are not the best customer types. They're the top five customer types you actually have to work at. We all know the customers, right? There's really trustworthy customers who are like, ah, I've never met you before, but the key's on the thing, I'll leave the thing. You know, the check's on the table, just let yourself in, right? You have those, you have the little old ladies who just want to talk. You have, you know, so many different customer types, but today we're talking about five of them, and each customer is different. And here's the big thing. If you're in sales, which we all are, not only are you selling stuff, but you're selling yourself. You're selling your business, you're selling why somebody should hire you as a company. You have to understand the customer type because that's how you have to talk to them. And this episode, I said, is probably one I'll get the most emails and uh, maybe hate from, which is cool. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. But there is a little bit of a chameleon role when you are in sales. You have to talk to people on their own uh, level. Here's one example that has nothing to do with the episode. But if you're talking to somebody from, say, say New Jersey, right? You ever talk to uh, Alex? Alex is talking fast. He's talking fast. This is what he wants, man. You got to do this because this is what you are in turn talking fast back to them because that is how they, they speak and that's how they listen. But now if you're talking to somebody in the mountains of Tennessee, if you've talked to John Lee here, he talks slow, man. He's slower talking. If you come at him and you're talking fast like the Micro Machine Man, he's not going to follow you or understand. You're talking different languages. So you have to change how you talk to people for them to be able to understand. And that is really what this whole customer type is. Finding a customer and knowing who the customer is is going to be a different way than uh, somebody you have no idea, right? You're gonna talk to a uh, female uh, between the ages of 40 and 60 differently than you may talk to a male ages 25 to 35, right? It's just different because people communicate different, right? Even if you don't agree with this, this is absolutely the truth. It's going to help you um, 
just talk to people, and I'm, I'm a no one, so really take this with a grain of salt. I'm just telling you my thoughts and experiences and uh, kind of feelings on it, so take it with a grain of salt. Please, 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 if you get anything from this, comment on YouTube what customer type, just any customer type, and how you deal with it. I want to hear it. I want to know. I love when you guys do that. It really is uh, part of my favorite thing. Next to when you buy supplies from me, of course. Um, but here's kind of the, the list as it goes. The number five customer type that uh, I see is the nitpicky customer. And everybody right now is shaking their head, right? You know exactly who I'm talking about. That person who is just never enough, right? You are somehow not doing it quite to their standard and they would have done it themselves, but they just had hip surgery in the, right? Those pieces, <laughs> that was so oddly specific that uh, I'm not really talking about anybody, but um, you, you all know, you know who, you know what's up. This is the type of person who follows you to every room, the type of person who will tell you what you missed before you even get to the room, the windows are still dirty. This is the person who asks you about your warranty and how do they call you for the seven day warranty, the seven day rain guarantee. This is the person who finds like they have eagle vision and they find every little, they're not looking at the glass like you are, they're not looking through it, right? Well, you have to understand the type of person. A nitpicky person wants to make sure that they're getting what they paid for. And the hard part about it is, is that we're a luxury business. Some people just cannot, uh, I shouldn't say afford. They can afford it, but they um, they know it's a big ticket item. Like if somebody's spending $500,000, $1,500 on their window cleaning, some people just understand it as maintenance. And some people are like, oh my gosh, I need to get my money's worth. It's so much money. Oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta make sure. And that's what the nitpicky person is. They need to understand that you are doing everything that you would possibly do to make sure that these windows are immaculate, right? And they need to be appreciated, appreciated, they have to. But there's a few things that you can do to make these people, A, love you, and B, be a little bit calmer with kind of what's going on. And the number one thing you can do with a nitpicky person as is they're kind of coming behind you, they're watching over your shoulder, you know they're watching over your shoulder, right? You just let them know, say, oh, hey, I'm going to the next room if you want to come with me and uh, just make sure that everything is uh, up to par, you know? I, I really do uh, enjoy that, that you're, you're watching this because sometimes I miss it, you get a different angle from where you are. Now listen, I know it sucks having somebody follow you and I know it's horrible, you just want to work, you don't want to talk, you don't want to have somebody nitpicking things, right? But what I always say is, hey, I want you to go, oh, I'm not, no, you don't have to, I'm not going to, I I, I'm, I trust you, but you know they're nitpicky and they're fighting every urge. I always say, well, you know, if you see anything, please do let me know. It's it's how we continue to get better is by, you know, uh, hearing from a homeowner on what they think and what they see. And if you initiate, if they just think that they're doing it and you're not noticing them following you, if you bring it up, they all of a sudden sometimes, and a lot of the times, we'll just stop. Oh, no, I I didn't mean to follow you. I, no, I wasn't double checking. I was just, just seeing if you knew what you're, you know, if you knew which windows to do. Oh, absolutely. Hey, it's not a problem. If you want to uh, piggyback to see kind of what everything's going on, that's that's definitely okay with me. You know, it, it, it always helps, you know, me too, if that's something you want to do. Oh, no, no, no. I, I just, and it stops it. That's the first one. But the second one, the second thing that that does is it allows that person, the nitpicky person, to know that, it's okay to check because you're not hiding anything. The big thing with those nitpicky people is they've usually been screwed by contractors at some point. And the worst person on this entire list for, um, I shouldn't say worst, but the, the, the most likely to complain or to have you come back or really waste your money is the nitpicky person. And to let them know that you are as transparent as possible makes them feel happy. It makes them understand like, oh, this guy's not hiding anything because they've been hurt by contractors before. Have you been hurt by a contractor before? Do you need a hug? But that's really what it is. Uh, also, you have to let the nitpicky person know that their house is special as far as how you're giving. You have to give the impression that you are going above and beyond for them. 
because that's really what they're looking for. They don't want to just be another person. They just don't want you to be in, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, pay me, leave. And then they're like, oh my gosh, you missed this window. I can't believe it. I'll never have them back now because they missed this window. They'll never come and fix it. One other thing that I always bring up to people is we, we do this to everybody. But I'll say to a nitpicky person multiple times, I'll say, hey, and keep in mind, you know, different sun, different times of the day, if you see anything, just let us know. We'll come back, you know. Uh, sometimes, very rarely, we'll miss something, and uh, I don't want that to happen. But just know we have 100% satisfaction guarantee, and we pride ourselves with standing behind that, right? They understand that nitpicky, and it doesn't mean they're going to be more nitpicky. What, what they're trying to catch is stuff that you're hiding or being shady or you're, you know, whatever. So it's really one of those things that just letting them know makes a big difference, and it gets people to open up and understand that you're on their team. Very important. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong on that nitpicky person. But the number four customer type that you will run into that you need to talk to a little bit different is the very busy person. We've all met that person too, right? We've all had that person like, ah, oh, I mean, what is this, nine o'clock? I can't get there at nine o'clock. I got all these meetings and I, I mean, I could fit you in. I got 10 minutes. I got to get in. I'll open the door for you. Then I got to get out of there. I just, I got all these things. I, I worked 16 hours yesterday and I worked 37 hours the day before. I just, oh, it, it's just, you know, I, I it's, it's so tough being, you know, uh, you know, whatever job that they're doing that's not usually super tough. It's usually not like, oh, I'm the mayor of this town. It's usually like, oh, I'm a, well, what do you do? Oh, well, I'm a uh, secretarial assistant or I work in a mailroom or something, right? Some people are out there, they want you to know that they're busy because they're not really busy. There's a lot of people who are like that. I had uh, people I've worked for in the past who uh, were so absolutely busy uh, that they didn't even spend time doing stuff except telling you how busy they are because they didn't really even have any stuff to do, right? So the very busy person is um, basically their time is more valuable to them as time. And you need to know that their time is valuable, right? So there's a couple ways that you can kind of go about that. First off, I always, 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 when somebody's busy, I don't have enough time, I'll let you in, but I got to go. Oh, man, I forgot I got to bring the dog to the... Hey, listen, listen, this is what we do. We're trying to lighten your load. You are doing a ton of stuff. You have a ton of hats. Let us lighten the load. Do what you need to do. We're going to be in and out of here super fast for you, but we're going to take this one thing off. Hopefully, it buys you up a couple more minutes. I know you don't have a lot of time. Oh, I don't have a lot of time. This is really going to help, guys. I really appreciate this. You know, I'm just so busy that I can't. Oh, absolutely. Listen, we all know they're not actually as busy as they say, right? Because if you're really, really busy, you're really, really good at time management because you have to be. So the thing is, is that they want you to know that they're busy and you need to then convey back to them that you know that they're busy. It's this weird gamble. I know and it's this weird thing and this is why we're going to get some emails here about how can you talk differently to different people. I just do my job. That's cool. But I always, always, always find the customer type and I talk to the customer in that way. And that's the one thing. I always let them know, hey, man, we were going to go so fast. Uh, we're going to do an amazing job. Remember, we have 100% satisfaction guarantee. You just call us. We'll come back. I know you're busy, but we're going to make this as perfect and as flawless as possible while going as fast as possible because we're going to get out of here taking this thing off. You know, we're saving you so much time, right? We're here working for you. Hopefully, it frees up some time. You know, just if you could just, you know, maybe this will give you two minutes to just sit down and breathe for a second. Ha, 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 right? They need you to know that they're busy. So you could talk to them back because they're busy. If somebody says to you, I'm so busy, I can't, I just does it. And you go, well, I mean, you hired us, but it's going to take four hours. I mean, you should have thought about it, right? They're instantly on the opposite side. You've ruined that. Talk to them on their own side of being busy. You know they're busy. Oh, man, oh, man, I can't believe, I can't believe how busy you are. I couldn't possibly be as busy as you are, <laughs> right? Uh, let them know, though, also that you appreciate their time. Hey, listen to you. You know, I am really, really happy that you let us even come here. I know you're super, super busy. This just puts us uh, uh, a wrench in your spokes. I know that, but really, lesson. I really appreciate you coming, letting us come out here and trying to squeeze this in. Uh, it really means a lot to us. You know, having you as a customer. Well, yeah. No, I mean, I'm busy, but I always got time to let people in. No, it's fine. It's fine. Make them feel good. Make them feel that you know they're busy and you appreciate that they're so busy that they let you come in. 
When you can talk to people like that on their own level, it will help you. I'm telling you 100%. It will help you the next time you want to go there. It will help you. That's a very busy person. By the way, if you're going to rank these on the YouTube chat, rank them from your favorite to least favorite or list off ones that I haven't brought up. Uh, but more importantly, just comment there on uh, YouTube video uh, itself. The number three person is the, you've never seen a home like this. Or, <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, you could do an estimate over the phone for the other guys, but I, I think you're going to be pretty shocked when you see this house. <laughs> I mean, we have uh, 12 double hungs. I mean, <laughs> we're pushing 1,500 square feet. It's, <laughs> yeah, this is custom. This is a custom home. Oh, okay. Oh, I listen, I really appreciate you telling me that. Um, I would hate to run into the wrong thing. You know, I'm just, I'm so used to cookie cutter homes. We don't run into custom stuff like here so often. I'm going to come on site. Let me do that bid there on site for you. And I, I appreciate you bringing it up. Oh, absolutely. You're going to have to, you're going to be happy you did. I, I think you're going to right there. You've already told them that they're home because if you have a mansion, they're not telling you this house is big because they're hoping you get there and you've priced it wrong. It's the people who are overly proud of what they have, and they should be proud of what they have. But it's the people who, they see their castle as a literal castle. And your job is to, holy cow, you're right, this place is awesome. Right? That's what they want. That's how you talk to them. If you go, oh, no, it, it's fine. I, I could see you have a single-story house, 1,400 square foot. Uh, we do a lot of those. <laughs> well, I mean... Maybe you do a lot of them, but not like mine, right? You're, you're insulting them because I already have it. I've had, I couldn't tell you, this is one of my favorite customers, and I'll tell you why, is because when you treat their house as amazing as they see their house, you're going to close that job every single time, every single time. So that's why I like those ones. But very first that's what you do is you, you show up, how, listen, you, you, you show up to do a bid and it doesn't come up very often. So I know you're thinking I do everything over the phone. That's how I save my time, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Work this one in, show up. You're going to do uh, upsells on it. You're going to make your money and you can even put on a little bit of a PETA factor because you had to show up. I get that. When you show up, you go, wow, you know, knock on the door. They show up. Hey, it's uh, Jersey from XYZ, man. And oh, hey, how are you? Good. I am. I'm really happy that you had me come on site because from what I was looking at, I could not see this house. Oh yeah, this thing, yeah, no, this is a, it's a, it's a custom home. I I could tell, like being here and seeing this. I mean, I would have been way off, like you know, just expecting this to be like everybody else's house. This is this is not. I know. Well, come on, we'll give you a quick. Talk. I'd love to look. I would love to look through this house. Uh, look at these windows. It's great. Going through, you ask questions and everything. Oh man, I. You got a, wi a window in the closet? Oh, that's so clever. Like that's, yeah, I know. Guess what? One in five houses have windows in the closet. But to them, you're talking their time. You're, you're giving them what they understand. They see this castle. This guy's appreciative of my house. Well, yeah, you know, uh, when we built this place, we, we said, hey, you know what? Uh, Midge, 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 Midge loves her, her light in her closet. We don't want to get clothes, you know, without natural light. And I said, you got to be off. Oh, that's awesome. That is the one thing with doing custom homes. It costs a pretty penny to do, but man, you can just tailor it to exactly what you want. Ah, oh, that's that's right. Yeah, no, this is this is just what we want. We're gonna die in this home. This is they're so proud of that. Why kill it for them? Why bring them down because you do a fifteen thousand square foot mansion? There's no need. There's no need. They're proud. Be proud with them. That's that's huge. And especially on the selling point, because they, they feel that you get it. Yeah, this guy. I've had people even when they were done, they brought me, I, job was done, we, we had bid it, we sold it, we cleaned it, and it happened to be one that, um, I don't remember the, the situation, but I was there. I wasn't cleaning, but I happened to be on site. Maybe there was a new guy training or something or whatever. And uh, the guy brought me in, and I did the kind of end spiel, you know, and he, he brings me in by the shoulder, he, Pulls me off the side. He says, listen, I don't normally do this, but I like your guys' work. If you want to take pictures of this house for a catalog or a brochure or website, I would love 
to let you do that. And this house was uh, about 2,000 square feet. It was cool. It was a house. So, you know, I'm not super impressed by a lot of stuff. But I said, oh, man, that is awesome. Well, I, you know, wow. I, you know, to do this, I'm, I have a photographer buddy. I'm going to have to get that all scheduled up. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll call you in a, in a month or so and try to schedule something up for that. I, I would love the pictures. That, that, oh, no problem. You know, hopefully this house will help you sell other. That's his final words was hopefully this house will help you sell other houses. I said, man, would it? If they see you doing stuff like this, you know, it it will really set us up, set us apart. That I didn't get back to that house. The la- next time that we were there, there we did take pictures, and uh, pictures are always good anyway. But it was one of those situations. This guy was so proud, and he took me off to the side, and he knew that I knew that his house was special. It's very cool, and you know, these people they leave on cloud nine, and you're trying to make a customer happy. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Um, let them know also that their house is very rare because a lot of the times that's what they they just want to be different. This house is not like the other. No, man, I this house is not like the other ones. I'm so used to cookie cutter style houses. They throw them up. There's nothing to them. They go, yeah, there's no craftsmanship. Oh, this house, the detail in this house. You couldn't reproduce this house. Oh, it costs you a million dollars to make this house now. Yeah, absolutely. Let them know their house is special. That's all they're looking for. You'll sell them every time. Um, the next um, customer type is the free hole. The free hole is probably my least favorite one because they ask and make it awkward for everything. Everything. Okay, we're going to do your windows. It's going to be $10 a window. We're going to do your screens. It's going to be this. We're going to do your sills, this. Here's your total price. Awesome. We'll be out there uh, Tuesday the 15th between 9 and 10 a.m. And we'll get you. Okay, how awesome. Thank you so much. Is there any other services you want? No, no, I think this will be good. Okay, great. We get out to the job. We start talking about other services and upsells. Of course, always upsell on site. No, no, you know, we're just looking to do the windows. Awesome. Well, cool, but let's get started halfway through. Do you think you could, you guys could just change the light bulbs in the uh, tall room? I know you guys have some ladders, but oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, light bulbs, you know, normally uh, when we do light bulbs for interior stuff is like, uh, you know, 20 bucks, but we can do it for 10, not a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So right there, they wanted you to do the first thing for free. But they didn't, you didn't allow them to do something for free because they're changing light bulbs. Yeah, it's changing light bulbs, but it's opening up this really unhealthy, I do free stuff for you kind of thing. Which, listen, I have moved furniture for little old ladies. I have uh, opened boxes from, uh, I don't even know what the heck it was. It was all wrapped after that. I've done weird things before for people. I've changed front lights. I've wiped out lights. I've done all that. But this is for people I already know. It's for people I know that aren't going to try to get everything for free. If somebody starts asking for free things right away, they're testing the waters. Do some free, oh yeah, we'll do the bulbs. Great, great, great. <clears throat> I have a couple bulbs around the outside perimeter of the house. Would you be able to get those too while you're at I mean, you're already up there, right? It will never stop because a free hole always wants free stuff. We all know them. We know who they are. They're always wanting free stuff. That's just how it is and how they are. They just, oh man, when I got done, I got all this stuff for free. Makes them feel cool, right? So just letting them know, even if you're like, oh yeah, no, you know, normally it's like five bucks a bulb, but yeah, we could charge you two bucks a bulb. Don't worry about it. I always say it too, like nonchalantly, like, because if you go, oh, sorry, yeah, I have to charge you two bucks. Like, well, I'm not paying. But if you're like, oh yeah, no, totally. We do. Normally it's five bucks a bulb. We'll do it for two. Uh, yeah, don't even worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of it for two. We're already here, right? And they're always like, oh. Yeah, no, no, just just those two right there. It's just those ones. Those are the same people who need the same bulbs changed outside. They're not going to be like, oh, can you change all five of those bulbs? Oh, that's an extra $10. It just kind of nips it in the butt because I don't want to be taken advantage of and I don't want crews to be on the site taken advantage of because we've all known those ones. Like, oh, hey, while you're pressure washing, could you just do a little little, little scoot right there in the back stairs? This is like the two stairs that kind of come down. Yeah. Hey, I, I, when you're, as you're walking back up, there's that one break. Just hit... They will nickel and dime you with free stuff. Just letting them know, oh, yeah, we could certainly do the little stoops. It's going to cost 15 bucks. I mean, we're already here, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you stop a free hole. Uh, they want stuff, but you're still giving them a deal. 
right? Because you are already there. It doesn't matter. And you're stopping the whole process. So giving them a deal, they still feel good. But nonchalantly giving them a deal, they're like, oh, yeah, no, that's uh, two bucks is fine. That's that's really kind of the way to stop one of those, the free holes itself. If they're asking for bigger stuff, and I've had people like, hey, you know, you pressure washed my whole house and you did my roof and windows. Why don't you throw in that patio in the back? Like, oh, hey, you know, that's definitely something we, we, we can talk about. Uh, right now, you know, our timing is set for only these services, but next time we schedule you, let me get you a price on that, and we'll just put it in the whole package and, and create that package price for you and get it all done. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, okay. We've told them you're too uh, time sensitive, right? We've only scheduled for so much time here, and you can't you know, push the whole day with that. Oh, we're already here. And that's not a problem. You know, we're already in the neighborhood anyway. Right, but putting them out to next service and letting them know that you're going to bid the whole thing, they may still have it done. You're adding those services. That's awesome. But letting them know that it'll be next service means they're not going to get that now. Right, you're under the time. They they know they're not going to penny you to do other piddle diddle things because it's taking up your time. Then they understand that part. You know, I've had people too that um, I've made feel extremely special by doing something little. And I know, like I said, I've done little lights and I've done, hey, yeah, they'll say something where, um, you know, oh, well, you know, I just haven't been able to get up there and clean that, you know, the top of that thing. It's, I'm sorry for the dust, guys. Not a problem. Well, you know, normally, you know, we charge that. Let me just hit that for you. We're going to be up there anyway. Oh, no, no, you don't have to do, they'll just take two seconds. That way, then you don't have to go up there. Don't even worry about it. You know, we won't, I won't uh, let the boss man know. That kind of stuff lets people know that you are doing things out of the kindness of your heart but because of how it was laid out you have to feel the situations they're not going to take advantage of you because now you've done something for them they're not going to expect another thing it's different everybody's different you have to kind of play it by ear but that's the free hole we all know free holes in the business i do now we have free holes so you're always uh you're always out there um the number one person or customer type is the my dollars worth more guy i'm telling you i shouldn't say it's always guys sometimes it's women but this is the person who my employees hate the most and the reason is is because they're degrading no one wants to be degraded right i'm valuable i know i'm valuable why are you degrading me you're paying me 70 dollars an hour to be here you're going to degrade me all you want, but you're paying me more than you make an hour, right? But this is the person who says, you know, how they say it is like, <laughs> I mean, you know, you're lucky. You should be lucky that you're here. Like, I don't need this service. You know, I chose you guys to, these. this is the one that's the hardest because these guys are so degrading, so degrading. It's hard, but... These are the ones that people will be upset at. I give in to these people and I talk to them differently. Because I can start seeing that they feel as though that whatever job that they give you or money, they could pay you, it could be a $1,000 job. And in their brain, it's the $1,000 that gets you out of the hole. This is probably your only job this month. That's what they're thinking, right? So what I do is I go at them. I give them a little bit more time. Um, when they kind of come off that way, I act super, super appreciative. You know, I'm not a servant. I know that, you know that, but I'm going to be, Hey, listen, we work for you, sir. That's is, you know, I let them know that because that's what they're striving. That's what they're looking for. Now we've always talked about cutting clients, kicking clients to the curb and everything else. And if that person drives you absolutely bad, you don't do work for them anymore. But that's how I treat it. I'm over gracious. Right? I let them know that I'm appreciative of what they did. Listen, I, I really, really appreciate you letting me, uh, you know, choosing us to be your service for this window cleaning, pressure washing, whatever. Uh, it's been awesome to do that. I really, really appreciate that. It really means a lot to me. Well, yeah. I bet. I bet. I bet this is a pretty nice payday for you. <laughs> We've all heard that. I've had people who get done and they're like, you're done? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, $87 an hour. I said, yeah, yeah, no, we, we work very efficiently. You know, we're always hiring. <laughs> they go, yeah, well, <laughs> I can't believe you you uh, are charging 80 something dollars an hour. 
Well, yeah. You know, I, I like to feel like, you know, we have a craft and those are hard. It's hard to kind of focus that out there, but you have to hold your ground. You don't ever, ever, when somebody's like, you charge that much, you should charge me less. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you know, next time we come out, you know, knowing times, you know, we may be able to change that if you want to drop some services or things like that. But, but uh, yeah, you know, usually our rates, uh, you know, closer to 100. So we did go a little bit lower than normal, but, you know, we really appreciate you letting us come out here and, and doing very well. You charge $100? Well, I didn't, but I didn't charge you $100, right? That's what they're thinking. So doing that, being super excited, just being very gracious to that person allows them to understand that their dollar, you know, <laughs> they really are making a difference. And if you want to cater to that, cater to that. If you don't, you're going to soil relationships with people because you're not talking to them the way they are. And this could just be very well the first time they meet you. It may never, ever happen again. But those are some of the customer types that are just very, very hard to deal with either way. But if you're watching on YouTube, please do comment down below. I'm serious, I'm serial. Comment down below, tell me your uh, least favorite or most favorite or any other customer types that you thought should have been on the list. Put it down below, I'd appreciate that. Give me the thumbs up and make sure you buy your supplies through me. We have a discount code. Every week we give you a discount code. If you order through me, you get 5% off with the discount code. And this week's discount code is free hole. That's what it is. Spell it how you want. Free hole. A free hole is the discount code this week. But call me. I'm telling you, I love all you guys that uh, text back and forth. Ask questions. Uh, text me when everything's in there. Little orders, big orders. I am absolutely as happy putting together a $50 order then putting that in, then I am doing a $5,000 order, right? I want them all. I want to be your sir. I want to be your guy. I want to be your rep at Window Cleaning Resource. And I want to help you through your thing. That's cheesy, I know, but I want all of you. So please do call me. Save this number. It's 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. Your first text to me, text me, be like, hey, this is uh, Jim Smith over at uh, All Clear Window Cleaning. Just want to say, hey, I love the podcast. I have an order for you. Just do that right there, and that means the world to me. It really does. Uh, this week's code again, Freehole, 862-312-2026. Get your tickets to the huge, huge convention. It's going to be awesome. It's coming up in weeks. Hopefully, this week watching this is going to be 4th of July, so hopefully you didn't blow a finger off, because that would be bad. So... Either way, uh, go out there, uh, find your customer type, call me with orders, and of course, until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>